You're welcome, everybody. Welcome to our final lecture in our electroculture series here with Yannick von Dorn. Today, we're going to touch on a topic that is perhaps uh, most comfortable for Yannick because it's the uh, the origins of his uh, academic work in his uh, thesis on music and healthy plant growth. So we're so interested in hearing all of this today. Yannick, thank you so much for being with us. Hello, Angela. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very grateful to, to share with you this presentation about the influence of music on plant growth. It's like this that I uh, began in 1998 to, to begin to do research about the influence of, of electromagnetic waves on plant growth. Uh, it, it was in the beginning first about the influence of music on plant growth. And even before, as a student, my interest was um, to find ways to learn more quickly, like uh, super learning ways to lose less time to learn at school, at the engineer school, and to have more time to, to, to make, uh, to go out with my uh, with my friends and do a lot of other things <laughs> like uh, most students like to do and so um by 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 reading a book about uh, uh techniques uh, to learn more quickly i found uh techniques in in a book uh, super learning or psychic discoveries behind the iron curtain it's, it's really an amazing book and in that book, they speak about how music can influence your brainwave activity and your consciousness and your awareness of time. And this is very interesting. It's like when you listen to certain music, um, it brings you in like in a in a in a space time where uh, time gets more slowly. It's like your awareness or your perception will will um, will uh, uh, will um, how to say that um, will will perceive time like going slowly, like when you listen to a, a classic baroque music. An example of this: if you drink a lot of coffee and you look at the clock, then you will see the Seconds, the, the seconds going like tick 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 tick. So it's like the it's 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 it's, it's like you do not have time between two seconds, and it's like uh, you need to do everything quickly. And when you listen to slow uh, baroque music, like uh, uh, certain Mozart uh, extracts or from Vivaldi, Mozart, uh, Corelli, uh, there are a lot of, of them. Well, then you will perceive time like tick, like the seconds, you will perceive them like tick, 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 tick. And it's like you can do a lot of things between two seconds. It's like you have the time to go search a coffee in the kitchen and come back to your room. <laughs> it's like you, you have a lot of time. Well, um, maybe music or certain waves can help us uh, influence time also. And when we speak about plant growth, you are speaking about the growth of plants of plants in a certain time frame. So uh, there are techniques or experiments that show that certain plants can grow a lot more quicker in certain conditions. But the question is, is it good or is it bad? Because we have seasons and it's not always good to grow more quicker. It's like you become from zero, from baby to uh, an old, uh, an old man in uh, five years, for example, you 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 do you do not on that. Huh? You you want to to grow up uh, quite uh, slowly and take your time. <laughs> um, so with plants, we can also see this 
uh, it's it's uh, it's a thought uh, that I share to you. It's that it's not always good to grow quicker. Uh, we need to respect the seasons. Uh, so it can become bigger, but uh, growing quicker is not always uh, better because then it dies also more more quickly. And and we have all a kind of lifespan. And uh, the idea is not to die more quickly. I don't think so. Um, but then we go to the question, the philosophical or religious question of what is life, what is death? Uh, it's another question. But um, yeah. Now to come back to music, it's the research on music and the influence of life that brought me to electroculture. Why I did electroculture techniques with uh, electricity, magnetism, and, and those kind of techniques is that when I did about the research about the influence of music on plant growth, I found it was uh, amazing, fantastic. It was really, uh, it was for me really eye opening, and, and uh, we will see that in that presentation. And then I wanted to convince all the farmers to put music in their fields <laughs> and in their gardens and in their, and, and uh, I, I went to a lot of research centers in Belgium, in, in France, all over during years. I went doing presentations at the Department of Agriculture of all regions in France. And they always were telling, ah, it's interesting, but uh, we don't have the funds to do research on it. Or um, um, ah, they, they were just saying it's interesting, but uh, they, they never uh, were um, uh, motivated enough to, to do really tests because they have their greed and they said, ah, it's not serious. I would. Uh, uh, what would other people uh, think of, of me if I put music now in the fields uh, and so on. And uh, so I was really disappointed because uh, I went all over and, I, and my company went even bankrupt at the, at the end because I was just spending money to present <laughs> the influence of music on plants, but uh, almost nobody uh, wanted to buy me uh, speakers and materials to uh, put the music in their fields. It was maybe too far ahead on its time. It was like 20 years ago. And then um, bit by bit, I discovered more about electroculture and the electromagnetic aspect of sounds too and how it influences on plants. And then I, I was thinking, yes, we can have the same influence uh, without sounds. So uh, like in secret, like discrete. And also uh, afterwards uh, came the effects of pyramids on plant growth. And then a lot more farmers and gardeners were uh, ready to test this in their gardens. And that's why we are now here. And now a lot of people uh, uh, try uh, electroculture because it's like more discreet. You, you do this in your garden, nobody knows it. It's like nobody see it, nobody knows it. Only if you really show your antennas, then they know it, but you can also do it, do, do it discreet and put it all in the soil. And most people do this because then they don't have to explain to their neighbors why they are doing crazy things in their garden. <laughs> and, and people like to be like uh, uh, discreet. And that's why electroculture uh, developed itself. It's uh, really psychological. Huh? It's not that music doesn't have effect. It, have, it has a huge effect, but it's not enough to show huge effects to make that people will adopt it and doing it. Uh, 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 we need to, to uh, uh, the, the, the people, uh, humans have their psychology and we need to fit to be like, um, yes, uh, to, to be 
uh, the psychological aspect of an innovation is also very important to make it happen. Uh, otherwise, people just say it's nice, but they don't do anything. <laughs> so now we will begin to the influence of music on plan growth. What uh, what uh, what made me also discover electroculture. <laughs> so that was an introduction. <laughs> So I did my research. I'm from 1976, I see. <laughs> uh, and I did uh, studies of engineering agriculture in, um, in Ghent, in Belgium. And um, I was uh, like um, uh, very disappointed of all the industrial techniques of of, of farming uh, for for me what what uh, really traumatized me in a certain way was all those uh, chemicals that were used and then they were telling us that it was uh, still good to to eat and it was in my eyes not possible to spray like apple orchard or potatoes like 50 times with chemicals with uh, with uh, with uh, skulls uh, drought on the on the stickers on the <laughs> on the bottles, and then uh, they uh, very toxic chemicals, and then they say it's still good to eat. It was not possible to believe that, and so I began to do to be interested in alternative techniques, and so bit by bit I discovered the techniques to learn more rapidly with music and then in one of those books there was like a little sentence about that the music has also influence on plant growth and like I was doing studies uh, as agronomist um, I was thinking whoa that seems very interesting and then I began to do more research and then I found the book the secrets of the soil uh, that we already talked about that is really a fantastic book that I that I advise to everybody to read still now it's a book from the 80s 90s but it's still today really very interesting and there was a whole ch ch chapter about the influence of music on plant growth in that book so I went to my I went to my uh, to my professors to ask, can I do uh, my antithesis about the influence of music on plant growth? And then my professors told me, oh, that's not serious. Uh, what, what are you talking about? Uh, and then I told them, no, it's uh, really serious. Uh, I want to do uh, experiments on this and I want to do research on this. And then they, they told, oh, there is not enough scientific uh, evidence or scientific uh, research about this. So I went get I went again at home and and I searched in the libraries and and uh, through internet. It was also the beginning of internet at uh, high school and university, and I began to find uh, some research articles. And one of the really most interesting research articles is are again from. Um, uh, from Canada, from Ottawa, where you have uh, some researchers, the name is Weinberger and Measures, uh, that did some research about the influence of music on plant growth in, in the 70s, in the 70s. And I contacted uh, those people and those researchers. I had uh, the wife of one of them uh, through email and phone. And then she told me, oh, she was so happy that I contacted her and that her man was so happy that uh, that there was one guy interested in his research <laughs> because there was so, so, so little interest in the whole world uh, or, or on his research. And, and then he was so happy that uh, there was a student or there, there was a guy that wanted to do things with this. And so I was happy for him, and I was also very happy and nice with that. And so I began to do uh, uh, to find all those scientific articles, and I was able to convince my prof my professors to do uh, research about this, to do my anti thesis. It was not easy, but I did it. Huh? So I we will see this now. Um, 
So here, that was the experiment I did at the University of Ghent in, in Belgium. It's also in this university that they invented the first uh, GMOs crops uh, that was invented in Ghent in Belgium. Uh, uh, so, uh, so you have the the best and the worst <laughs> in that university, <laughs> and um, they they did also some experiment about uh, electroculture in 2012. Uh, but uh, also very interesting. But that's another topic. Maybe we talked about this in a, in a previous presentation. But here I did uh, uh, in in one greenhouse. I put it like around 20 plants before loudspeakers. It's uh, the picture you see on the top on the right. And on the bottom on the left, you see uh, 20 plants, uh, around 20 plants, tomato plants that were like uh, 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 five to 10 meters away from the, uh, the first place. So they, they had some music, but very little intensity because they were not close to the loudspeaker. So it was like the control group. Huh? And they had the same light and the same uh, uh, temperature, the same uh, uh, humidity of the environment, the same uh, soil in the pots, uh, everything the same. Huh? And I give to them six minutes of certain frequencies are uh, really very specific uh, frequencies uh, to the, the the group on top and you see the difference in growth there was like more than 20 percent growth to the group with the six minutes frequencies so it shows you how how much uh, that was really eye-opening for me in the way that how just six minutes of certain frequencies can have of effect on plant growth. So imagine uh, already 20% more growth. So my professors were really um, uh, very disturbed with this because uh, I had a professor, his work was like to make selection of different varieties of wheat and if in 10 years uh, research he had like 5% more growth, he was very happy. Huh? And, and, and here I show uh, one experiment with just 20% more growth. So it was, he was really dis disturbed by this. And, um, and so uh, what are those frequencies? How did I do this? Well, in music, it's a waltz subject uh, the, the, I could speak uh, a whole day about this because it's it's uh, if you go really profound in the influence of music it can be complicated too uh, it's it's a lot of uh, um, there are a lot of different influences but this techniques this technique was from an inventor of France uh, his name is Joel Sternheimer and he discovered that you can have certain uh, melodies or uh, like a succession of different frequencies in music that acts like a key, like a key in, uh, in the keyhole of a door. Huh? So uh, you need like a code. And you can have like a code that will become in resonance with uh, protein synthesis in the plant, with certain proteins, an example. If uh, you know the protein of uh, plant growth or certain uh, plant growth hormones, for example, well, you can have certain frequencies that will specifically uh, stimulate that protein, for example, or also inhibit. You can even make uh, uh, a protein uh, melodies uh, that will inhibit. Uh, so you, you can do a lot of things when you know that knowledge, how it works. And, um, and so I made uh, with that uh, knowledge, with that discovery and, and that uh, inventor, that was also a professor, uh, I made uh, the sequence of certain proteins of the plants uh, to 
have a specific effect on the growth of the cell. So all the cells of the plant were bigger. Uh, it was uh, a protein called extensin. And uh, it's like it was like biotechnology, but with sounds. Uh, it was really a very specific uh, sounds. It's like you can manipulate uh, the, the growth or the gene or, or, the, or the genetic expression. Uh, so the genetic expression of the plant will make that it will express or stimulate biosynthesis of this or that protein. Well, you can regulate that with sounds or with electromagnetic frequencies. But you can use this in, um, in an holistic way, like when you use classic Baroque music or classic music, or you can use it in an allopathic way or in a very um, specific, more manipulative way. Uh, like uh, manipulation, like you have the difference between uh, chemicals and uh, plant uh, um, plant extracts or, or fermentation of plants to to help your other plants or um, or compost tea, for example. It's a holistic way. It's not just a molecule or it's just it's not a, 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 of uh, certain molecule. No, it's a it's a holistic uh, approach. Well, with sound, you can have a holistic approach, a holistic approach that will not cause harm and that can also have very beneficial effects. Or you can have a very specific uh, chemical approach in a certain way when you will influence just one process, but that that then can have also secondary effects that will be bad. Uh, so, like with that technique, also, and um, but uh, that technique or that knowledge makes me uh, discover how nature works or the the the, the electromagnetic uh, dimension of it in a certain way, uh, how it interacts with each other, uh, how yes. But we find that back also in nature. An example in bird songs. In bird songs, you have uh, melodies, and you have certain uh, melodies that will influence directly plant proteins uh, biosynthesis. So it, it's not by hazard those melodies. It's not just to make it beautiful. No, it has it has also real uh, scientific. Uh, uh technical effects on the plant biosynthesis on 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 protein biosynthesis and plant growth so it's not just a uh, hazard and um and you can uh, study this and then you can discover that for example in vivaldi in baroque music uh, vivaldi you have uh, spring summer uh, autumn and winter uh, music pieces of music well in the music of spring you have uh, a sequence in that music that will be in resonance with uh, a protein called actin in plants and actin is a protein that is very important for um, uh, the flowers and the fertility of the flowers and that's very interesting because uh, Vivaldi uh, made that music uh, inspired by springtime. And it's in springtime that you have more flowers. And when you look at the sequence of the sounds, the, the melodies, you can find back a sequence that is directly related or in resonance with the biosynthesis of that protein very important in flowers. But Vivaldi, he didn't know about biotechnology. He didn't know about quantum physics or whatever. Uh, he was not in science or the science of today was not uh, the same at his time. But he like uh, created that music like in resonance with the environment uh, of that moment just by inspiration, by intuition. And that gives us a key to that 
when you do things by intuition, it's like you connect to uh, to real knowledge or to real um, to uh, some will speak about the Akashic uh, records or or the 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 whole knowledge of humankind and the world. It's like when you are really uh, connected, you can really find what is in resonance or, or, or what will be like a key uh, to come in resonance with with the process. And so, like Vivaldi, as an artist, he he created music that really corresponds with with the subject with uh, with the season he 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 wanted to create music for uh, so it's very interesting so that gives us a key to understand that art music intuition it's all and science it's all closely connected it's like at the work of Leonardo da Vinci, you have really engineers, engineering uh, drawings, but it's at the same time very if, if efficient, but also very beautiful and nice and, and really, and that's what engineers also tell in most cases, when they do something that works really well, it's also beautiful. So it's also art. It's, uh, it's not just, um, it's not just something that is ugly. No, when it's ugly, it's mostly not working well. <laughs> also, uh, so you you have really in nature, uh, you you have a kind of order. Uh, when you feel something ugly, in most cases, it's not good. And when it's uh, beautiful or feeling good, in most cases, it can be good. Uh, but not always, be careful. You have also um, the egoistic approach uh, where you just want to, um, how to say that, um, uh, that's done more religious approach uh, where you just want uh, um, to make it nice for yourself, that's different. And that, that's not uh, good for the wall, uh, the big interest uh, in a certain way, yeah, it's different. Um, so, uh, like you see, it's a wall different, a wall, uh, uh, a big difference between the two um, uh, plots of plants. Now we will uh, look forward. That was one of the first articles I had in a little magazine in France, an alternative magazine about science. It's a, like a borderline science. Uh, it was called Science Frontières, and uh, where they interviewed me about this uh, research. I was one of the first, uh, maybe the first, I think, uh, I don't know, others before. Uh, that did a thesis about this subject. So, and here about good vibrations for agriculture. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I was young, this was an article in, new, in local newspapers in 2004. Um, uh, it's a big French newspaper where then I worked on the influence of um, electromagnetic uh, treatment of irrigation water for uh, greenhouses and uh, an orchard. And then um, I developed techniques and I worked with companies that, that worked in that field uh, that developed techniques too, where they put like a music on water uh, or certain electromagnetic waves on water. And so I, I, I had some more, um, I, I did then more research about uh, how it works on water. I, I found a lot of uh, science articles about this. There, there's a lot to talk about uh, and a lot of research about this. Um, and uh, an electroculture in a way is also an evolution of this in the way that uh, water is used as uh, uh, the medium to transmit that energy. It's like an antenna, the water. And um, and electroculture, like we do, 
with antennas directly in the fields, it's like you don't need the water anymore. It's like you do it directly in the fields <laughs> or you, you will, it's like you do directly a treatment of the water in the fields <laughs> also. Huh? So the, the, the water itself uh, can be toxic or can be good. It's like sound. It's not just about making sound. Uh, it's, it's, it needs to be a special sound or certain frequencies of sound or melodies. It needs to have a certain harmony inside to, to make it work. If it's just a, a piece of sound, it, it, it has almost no effect or it can even be a toxic effect. Well, with water, it's quietly the same. If you have just a chemical water, you take uh, the molecule of oxygen and the molecule of hydrogen or atoms, and you put that together in a laboratory, then you have water, chemical water, and you give that chemical water to the plants while they die. So it shows that it's not the water that will hydrate or that is important really uh, for the plants. It's the energy carried by the water. And what we do with electroculture, it's also about the energy of the antennas. Because it's not just I put a pole in my garden and, uh, and uh, the plants will grow better. Otherwise, every phone pole, every uh, big pole you have uh, around the, uh, uh, um, along the roads, you would see that the plants go better around and it's not true so it's not just a, uh, the the lightning rod effect or the the point effect it's not only this it's more subtle energies that have really the effect well wet water is the same uh, uh, so and so like i showed you i i did first research on music on plant growth then on the influence on water and irrigation and that brought me to electroculture and more spiritual aspects of it it's like a whole um part huh? it's like you go uh, uh, um, it's like you go on a mountain it's not just with a helicopter it's it's a whole adventure <laughs> Uh, it's all uh, uh, here you see the the basic formulas uh, that uh, that are the basis of that discovery about how you can influence um, protein biosynthesis with sound. Well, it's based on on uh, quantum physics, on the formula of um, uh, what uh, we called uh, Einstein, that uh, when you have a mass, uh, you a weight of an atom, you can calculate uh, an energy level, an energy, and and the speed of light. Well, well, when you have um, uh, the constant of Planck and that energy level, you can calculate a frequency. So when you put the formula of Einstein and the formula of Louis de Broglie together, then you can calculate with the mass of, of an atom or a molecule or whatever, in, re in reality, everything you want, you can calculate a frequency. And so when you have a frequency, you can calculate the, the sound uh, note. And then you can calculate also the melodies that will uh, resonate with uh, protein biosynthesis. Why? Because a protein is made up of different molecules in a succession, like, uh, like you have a, a train with, uh, with the wagons, with the wagons, you have a, a protein is like uh the 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 succession of the wagons while well, all the wagons are are the amino acids and the protein is made up of amino acids and you have 20 different amino acids in life and each amino acid will correspond with one musical note and in that research of music we discovered that when you have natural uh molecules 
when you calculate their frequencies, it corresponds with the musical notes. And when you have uh, pollutants, then in most cases, it doesn't correspond with musical notes. It's like not in harmony. So it's like it creates disharmony. And that's very interesting because then you have a lot of secondary effects, bad effects, uh, disharmonious growth, disease, uh, a lot of problems. Well, um, it shows that you, you need or you want to tend to more harmony. That's why I'm talking in electroculture that it's about harmony. It's about energy and harmony. It's to stimulate in a holistic way the energy and in, in a harmonious way. It's not just about uh, putting more energy. You know, it's also that everything is in harmony, and then you will create health, healthy conditions. Otherwise, you create also uh, uh, secondary effects that can be bad and disease. Uh, you can have a lot of, a disease can have a lot of energy too. Eh? Uh, it's not just about energy. Um, yeah. So another example of an experiment I did with those techniques, it's on a roses uh, in a greenhouse where you see the leaves were becoming really very, very big, like uh, A4 uh, paper, uh, like really big. And it was also with just a few minutes uh, a day of, of certain frequencies. So that knowledge can also make it possible to develop a lot of techniques without any chemicals, uh, just to regulate a plant growth. If there is a problem, also a problem of disease, but also for human health, but that's another topic. Uh, you, you can really do a lot of things uh, in a more, in a more, um, uh, in a way with less secondary effects than with chemicals, for example. Um, then there is also another technique because you have a lot of techniques with sounds. You have also a technique where they will imitate bird songs. So that's, uh, uh, that's a technique developed by Don Carlson of Sonic Bloom. Uh, he had a, com a company, uh, Don Carlson Enterprises, or, uh, with his brand Sonic Bloom, where he sold like little loudspeakers like this that imitates uh, bird uh, frequencies or interesting bird frequencies that stimulate a lot plant growth. And uh, maybe I can make you listen if it works. I oh, know it doesn't work here. Uh, but it, it's like the sound will do like. It's like a very uh, high, high uh, frequency sound. Huh? And with just those frequencies, you can already uh, stimulate a lot of plant growth. Like you see on the beetroot on the left, they were grown with those frequencies and on the right not. Uh, the carrots, the same. And this will also increase um, a plant leaf absorption of, of nutrients that you can have on the plants, like in the morning, when you have uh, the moisture of the humidity uh, on the leaves, while well, you have a lot of bacteria, natural bacteria on the leaves, and they, they will excrete certain proteins that will uh, be used as a nutrient, as food for the plants. So the plants doesn't only grow by nutrient uptake through the roots, but also through their leaves huh? in, in nature too. And the, the sound waves of uh, the birds are very important to make this happen. Without the sound waves of the bird, you have like 50% less plant nutrient uptake through the leaves. So it's, it's a big difference. Now imagine that you have like 90% less birds now than like uh, maybe 50 years ago. So it's like nature needs those bird songs, but they don't have them. So they are like depressed. Nature, all plants are already depressed. When you see a plant growing today, you need to imagine that normally it, 
it will need to grow a lot better. It just it's depressed today. All nature is depressed today for different reasons. There's a lack of natural sounds. And there is also uh, the electromagnetic pollution also uh, uh, that also depresses the plant growth. But and that's why when you put bird songs or classic music in your greenhouse or in your uh, on your balcony or in inside your house or in your fields, you will see that the plants will grow a lot better very quickly. And you will see huge difference because they are they have a lack of sound now. A scientific explanation, uh, well done, Carson showed with electron microscopy, you have on the leaf's surface, you have the stomata. So it's like a little mouse with a cavity uh, behind it. And it's through those mouths that, uh, that the plant um, uh, and exchange uh, carbon dioxide and, uh, and uh, water and water. And, um, and uh, when it's closed, it cannot exchange. Huh? So when it's very heat in, at summertime, uh, at, at lunchtime, for example, well, then most plants will close their stomata. They don't grow uh, really. But in the morning, evening, night, they breathe and they absorb uh, carbon dioxide and they transform it in, in sugars and proteins and whatever. So they grow. And uh, well, what uh, Don Carson discovered is that when plants grow with the help of music or bird songs, then they develop two times more stomata on their leaves. Uh, on each square centimeter, you have like two times more stomata and they are more developed. And you see this on the image on the bottom. On the left, it's uh, without sound. And on the right, you see a lot more stomata uh, uh, with sound, and the stomata are like more finely developed. Huh? Now, on this image, it's not always very easy to see, but uh, I have the original document where you see this uh, even more better and better. And another aspect of it is that that sound of uh, the bird sounds will also stimulate. Um, the chloroplast organelles in the cells, like you see the image on the top uh, left, you see the cells with the chloroplast. And uh, when you put the sound, the chloroplast moves. It's inside the cell, the, the chloroplast moves. At night, the chloroplast or doesn't move. But when you put the sound, it moves. There's also another thing that makes it move, it's light. So uh, when you have uh, in the morning the sunrise and light comes up, then the chloroplast moves. So it's like the activity of the cell awakens with light, but also with sounds. Uh, and what, we, what happens now, normally before sunrise, you have already the birds singing. But now, like we told, we have all, almost no birds anymore. So uh, we have a, a lot, a, a lack of energy in nature now around us and for plant growth too. And what happens too in, uh, in springtime, you have uh, the problem of frost uh, damage on, in, uh, in orchards, in uh, grapevines. Uh, 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 why? Because in the past, you had a lot of birds and the frost damage is mostly uh, in the morning before sunrise. When there is a little frost in springtime, it destroys the cells because the, 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 the inner cell or the, 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 the water will, will freeze and will explode the cells. But if the cell, um, uh, if the interior of the cell would move because of sound, then it would not freeze us. It would not freeze as as quick, and then you would not have that damage. So 
it's because of the lack of birds that we have that problem today or, or more in agriculture today in comparison with uh, 50 years ago or uh, a, a century ago. And so it makes it makes it easy also to solve that frost problem because you just need to put uh, classic music uh, in the morning at night uh, uh, to the plants and it's uh, very cheap and it will increase a lot uh, plant growth and, uh, and uh, resistance against frost. It's like when you have a, a river uh, water moving it will freeze a lot less uh, quickly than uh, st stagnant uh, water. It's very logic. Uh, well, in the cells of the plants, it's the same. When it's uh, submitted to uh, bird songs and sounds, uh, it, it will have a stimulated effect. It's a mechanical effect too uh, for plant nutrient absorption through the stomata, but also the plants develop a lot more stomata, so they have a lot more potential for growth. And uh, the cell activity is also similar. You have three, three really big aspects showed, showed by science how uh, sound have a mechanical influence on plant growth and a huge influence. So it's an, an again the same uh, drawing of how stomata are made uh, or a, a, a schematic to understand how it works. And when it's like also um, uh, how to say uh, the uh, uh, yes and the resonant effect is like a pump action. When you will have the sound on that cavity, it's like the sounds of the birds are calculated to be exactly a resonant frequency of those cavities. And so in nature, there is no hazard. It's like it's made for it. And, um, and then it will have a pump action. It will like vibrate and will stimulate the exchange of the air and, and carbon dioxide. So we're, we're, we're of the plant with the environment. So it, it will really stimulate it. Huh? Yeah, so that's an article from the USA in the past where they put music in uh, cornfields uh, and they had like it's written 17% more growth, but in reality you can have even a lot, uh, much more. An example here, more than 50% more yield with three meter tall corn plants with the uh, technique of sonic bloom, for example. Uh, so here an example also from Sonic Bloom um, in 2000 from 2004 from his scientific uh, document uh, you see black walnut trees that were growing two times faster even more than two times faster you you see on the bottom the level of growth of the control group and on top in green the level of growth of the the trees submitted to the, that sound. Huh? So what, what what Don Carson did, he put those sound frequencies with the uh, little uh, speakers in the orchards, and then he sprayed um, a kind of algae solution, uh, uh, algae extract from the Atlantic Ocean from Ascophyllum nodosum, and in that algae, you have all plant nutrients you need. You have really all, uh, it's a really a holistic approach. It's not just uh, nitrogen or potassium or whatever. No, it's really, it's like a, it's like a compost tea. It's like a whole uh, set of nutrients uh, that you find in those algae in, a, in the ocean. And, uh, and that extract, even at very low concentration, have a really plant boost effect in the way that the plants will absorb the, the plant nutrients in a molecular, molecular form of proteins. So they, they already gain the energy that they don't have to transform the potassium, the nitrogen and proteins themselves. They just absorb it directly. 
uh, like they would absorb it through mycorrhiza or through uh, fungus in the, in the soil too, or other algae that lives in the soil also. Uh, and in combination with the absorption through the stomata, well, with the sound at laboratory level, it influences more than 700% plant absorption through uh, the stomata, through a plant leaf uh, absorption, uh, through, through the leaves, uh, through the stomata. But in reality, in practical way, in the, in the field, when you put speakers, they, they tell it's around 50%. Uh, but it's already a lot. Huh? Uh, it's really amazing. You can uh, make uh, grown plants almost without soil and just by spraying uh, plant nutrients on it and, and, uh, and music. It's really amazing. So here again, uh, uh, um, in comparison with, uh, so he had like uh, in centimeters, I calculated it was four, 4.25 centimeter diameter growth each year in comparison uh, with, uh, with, um, uh, with the control group that was a lot less uh, what, um, of growth in one year. Yes. And so treated 25 centimeter after 10 years and control was only 7.5 centimeters. So it's a whole difference. Huh? So you can understand that the lack of bird songs, bird frequency sounds in nature makes that our forests, our gardens are really depressed. When you put sound, I had some customers, uh, vegetable growers uh, that put like uh, music on raspberry plants, raspberries in a greenhouse. Well, the raspberries were two times bigger, just with the sound. And he even didn't put uh, nutrients, uh, uh, sprayed nutrients or whatever. He just put the sound to, uh, uh, above it, above his normal way of doing, and he had all uh, raspberries. So here you see speakers like uh, Sonic Bloom um, uh, distribute to put in the fields. Uh, it's a special loudspeakers he made with tweeters and a little electronic uh, part uh, to um, where you have those frequencies uh, programmed in, inside. Uh, so you just uh, put the, the, the juice, uh, the ele electricity on it, even with a battery or a solar panel, and it works. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to use. Uh, other experiments, uh, ah yes, the effects of ultrasound. Well, when you listen to birds songs, well, when you are old, most old people almost don't hear uh, high frequency bird songs because our ear is, is not sensitive enough. And birds uh, also sing at frequency that we do not hear. So we, what we hear is only a part of the song <laughs> in a certain way because they, they, they send out also uh, uh, more ultrasound frequencies too. Well, ultrasounds have also a huge effect on uh, plant, uh, on seed germination, for example. Uh, so there are also scientific articles about this, like you see on that um, a graph uh, where you see after 28 days, the plants uh, treated were like uh, 12 inches big and the plant untreated six inches big. So it's a whole different, uh, ju just with ultrasounds uh, so that, that you do not hear. And ultrasounds are very interesting because uh, they travel in a big area. Uh, they are not easily absorbed. So the, 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 um, with, with one you can have influence on a very big area of, of, uh, of a field. Uh, with the more low frequencies, you have a lot less um, uh, at the area is, 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 is a lot uh, more tiny. Uh, it's, it's a, a lot more little because uh, the, the sound uh, is rapidly absorbed. 
So here in uh, uh, this is the guy from Ottawa. It's a patent from um, 1972, like you see, from Pearl Weinberger uh in ottawa ontario canada so it's close to your group <laughs> to a lot of your so maybe there are still uh maybe he still lives maybe not but uh that's one of the basic uh researchers about that subject of uh influence of uh, music on plant growth in a scientific way yeah very interesting article you find those articles on my internet site uh, I have a document PDF that I share for free uh, on my internet site. Otherwise, you can find it on internet too. But I can send it. My thesis also is for free on my internet site in French. Uh, maybe one day, I, I hope close, I will translate it in English uh, because so you you get also that information. Um, so. Uh, you see on top right of that article of that patent, uh, he put some references of science scientific articles. So you have the use of ultrasonic energy in agriculture from 1949. You have also the effects of of, of frequencies. Uh, so Canadian Journal of Botany in 1968. You see, so very interesting articles. You have also another aspect of the influence of music on plants. It's it's um, is the emotional aspect. The emotional aspect you will not find in my thesis because otherwise they would not give me my degree. <laughs> I would not have my my uh, my diploma. So, uh, but I didn't know really about this at that time. But so it was the it's the emotional aspect when you like certain music and you give to your plants you you will vibrate or you will feel good you you will radiate good emotions and that's also an aspect that is very important because if you are stressed um, uh, with bad feelings well your plants will feel that too and will uh, also be stressed and uh, and then they will not grow as good um you can even kill plants just by your stress <laughs> uh, 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 i i i had one day uh, i had a guy uh, coming uh, to my place with very bad energy and then one afternoon i had the plant on my table uh where we did the meeting and the plant was almost dead after a day uh, he he was uh, really very bad so your your feeling is very important and in the work in the research of cleve baxter he showed it scientifically with um, with electrodes that he put on plant leaves he could uh, measure the stress level of the plants and he he discovered even that if you have a bad intention, the feed directly, it's in resonance. It's like your your animals or your domestic animals, like your cat or dog. It feels directly how you feel. If you come inside your house and you are very stressed, your animals uh, feel it directly, uh, uh, and the and the opposite uh, way also. If you feel good, your animals feel it directly. Well, uh, also. If you are a man and your wife is uh, very stressed, uh, you you know it. She, she 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 even don't need to talk. You know it directly. Well, uh, your plants know it also, and you feel already stressed. Uh, 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 so uh, so it's the and and the other way also. When you feel good, it's like an energy that you radiate, and this is very important also in your garden. And this is also a part of uh, electroculture. Uh, uh, there's the emotional aspect. So when you put antennas, for example, or music or whatever, well, something can be good in itself as a technique. But if you don't like it, you will send out uh, bad energies. So then it will be opposite effect, maybe. So it's uh, it's also very important. Huh? So it, it's better to do what you like uh, in a certain way, because otherwise, 
uh, it doesn't work together. So the, the work are the book primary perception, biocommunication with plants, living foods, and human cells. It's very interesting from Cleve Baxter uh, about this uh, in regard to this, also with uh, the influence of music on plant growth. So I did some experiments uh, with uh, wine yards. And here, this was a wine yard in Alsace, in, uh, in France, in uh, 2008 or 2009 where I put uh, I helped uh, the, the the grower to put uh, speakers and to advise for the the best music and that year he had the best uh, sugar content of his grapes compared with all his neighbors and also uh, uh, a lot less disease uh, uh, and uh, a higher resistance to disease and he had a really lot less disease and he had 30 to 50% more growth just by putting some uh, music uh, above uh, in, in his fields. So it can really have huge effects. But there are not many, like I told in the beginning, there are not many farmers ready uh, or, or that, 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 that do it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But it's a pity yeah? because when you see the results, it's really. Uh, to do this. Another uh, research is at the University of Florence in Italy. There they do it already since more than 10 years, uh, even uh, I think close to 20 years already. Um, and here you see they put classic Baroque music every day uh, from morning to evening, uh, really the whole day. And they had huge results. You see the graph of the growth of the, the, the wines, uh, the grapevines. You see the blue line, uh, the blue uh, is uh, with music and the red without. You see huge difference of growth. And also on the bottom, that was a test in, in pots, in big pots. You see the grapevines on the left is with music and on the right without. You see how more little they are on the right, really less green also. So it's a huge difference, and it's only the difference of music uh, that made that effect. So today in uh, agriculture, all the plants are like on the right, on the bottom right. You, you understand? In your gardens too, without music, they are all on the bottom right. Even if they look shiny and nice, understand that they could be like on the left. <laughs> they could be even a lot better just by putting some uh, classic Baroque music. Uh, and why Baroque music? It's not, uh, I'm not speaking about a new age uh, music. Uh, it can also be nice, but, uh, or, or certain uh, no, other music. But Baroque music, it's really a fantastic music in the way that it's really inspired in connection with uh, nature's energies you can find back a lot of uh, protein uh, uh, sequences uh, of protein biosynthesis with the plants in Baroque music, uh, it's proven. And also you have high frequency from, from the violin, for example, you have a lot of high frequencies that are very beneficial for plant growth. And you have also very calm, relaxing rhythms. That's also very important aspect. Uh, 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 that helps also plant growth and harmony. And it's also very harmonious music. That's also very important. So with Baroque music, that's really proven over the years to be very beneficial, uh, like you see in that uh, experiment, for example. So it's not all kind of music that, that, that will give uh, that effect. Huh? Um, and I met a, a student that did uh, the, the follow-up of that research in, uh, at the University of Florence, at a grower in Florence. And uh, I asked how much do they uh, spray with uh, chemicals or other products against disease in that, uh, in that field of, of grape vines, of, of the vineyard. And if you know, even in organic farming, 
normally they spray a lot. Uh, they spray copper, they spray different products, even if, the, if it's organic products, they spray a lot because they have uh, a lot of diseases uh, in most cases. Well, in that case, he has almost no disease. He never saw the farmer spraying when he was there. He was uh, really not, there was no disease. So that shows you also that when a plant is growing well, there are almost no disease. Uh, it's not a fatality or it's not normal when there is disease. Now today in agriculture, they find it always normal to have diseases and that they need to spray, they need to treat, they need to do things. Well, no, that's not normal. That's why, that's because we are doing things to, to make the disease. And we just have to stop to doing things to generate the disease. And then we don't need to, 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 to solve it. Uh, well, it, it's because we don't understand nature enough. And then we, we really create the conditions for disease. And uh, if we would inspire ourselves a lot better from nature and all that knowledge, well, then we can just create the conditions to have healthy plants and electroculture techniques, uh, music, uh, uh, energy of the water uh, uh, can help naturally with this. And that's why we are here. <laughs> Another aspect um, above it, it's about the tuning of the music frequencies. Well, uh, music traditionally today is tuned to with the A at 440 Hertz. Uh, you have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, or C, D, E, F, G, A, S in the American way or English way of, of um, to define the musical notes. Well, uh, in music today, internationally, or in the Western world, they uh, tune the A or the La at 440 Hertz. But that's not really natural. In nature, uh, or in the past, before World War II, the A was tuned more to 432 Hertz. And when the A is 432 Hertz, then the other musical notes gets also frequencies that are a lot more in harmony with nature. Um, and then for example, you have the Sol or the G will be uh, 384 Hertz. And that's also a resonance frequency with oxygen or the proton also. So very important in, for health and in nature oxygen. Um, chlorophyll, for example, has a resonance frequency also of 256 hertz, and this corresponds then with um, the C or the Do when the A is at 432 hertz. So everything becomes like um, matched in tune with natural frequencies. And when we listen to music at 440 hertz, it's like a disconnect. Sound and frequencies. It's like it put us out of tune. And when we listen to music, and imagine that nature, if you if you put the music that is in resonance with the natural frequencies that you find in nature, it's like you give it energy. It's like a and it's 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 like energy through it's energy through resonance. It's like an antenna. It's like you have a glass. You have a glass. And when you put a white frequency, it will vibrate, but another frequency, it will not vibrate. Well, when you will put a white frequency, everything will vibrate. It, you will even give energy and that you will not give or receive if it's out of tune. Well, you have seen that effect on of Baroque music on the grapevines. Well, that was all that was already an effect of the harmony of the music. Uh, but that music was still at 440 Hertz. So it's not so bad. It's already very good. But when you put the same music at 432 Hertz, it's even a lot more powerful, really very powerful. I will show you. 
Um, ah, that's another graphic. An example, I, I knew a guy, uh, his name is, uh, the, the researcher is called uh, John Stuart Reid. It's an Englishman um, that did a lot of research about sound and cymatics. And he went in the big pyramid of Egypt. So here you see the link with the pyramids too. Uh, and in the, in the king's chamber, he, he did uh, experiments to discover resonant frequencies with the king's chamber and the sarcophagus. And he discovered that there was a resonant frequencies, frequency at 432 hertz specifically. So it's not by hazard. And he went, at that moment, he did that experiment. He had a, a very huge back pain, back pain. Uh, he had, uh, uh, in French, they, know, they name it a sciatic, sciatic. I don't know in English, but that's very uh, uh, painful. And um, after he did the experiments in the King's Chamber, he had like an hour uh, time to do his research. Um, uh, when he went out of the pyramid, he didn't have back pain anymore. He was completely healed. So he, he, he discovered like this also the, the powerful effect of healing of uh, four words in combination with the pyramid uh, effect energy. So very interesting. Um, so we see that the pyramid, like we saw in the other presentation, it's in relation with nature's constants. It's like to show us the way where to go or what to do. If, if we imagine our ancestors, why they would build a pyramid, why they just don't build a big uh, house or a big, or a big uh, monument uh, just for them. No, they were building it because they wanted to transmit a message to, to, to future generations that will hold time, that it's still after thousands of years still um, uh, still there that we still can discover uh, a message through it. Otherwise, I don't see the reason why to build this if it's not to to uh, send a message to future generations. Uh, probably, I think, in a, in a way. Uh, uh, today, we are not doing this in our societies, in our capitalistic and consumption society. We just do it, do things that will hold a few years or a few decades and then it's destroyed again and we build it again <laughs> because uh, it's it's a whole other uh, way every house we see around us in a few decades it's not there anymore it will be another house because we have to build that wall again because it's not strongly enough built <laughs> uh, uh, so but in that time we have pyramids that hold like thousands of years. Ah, they are eroded, okay, but uh, they are still there. <laughs> Here an experiment of just 15 minutes a day of 432 Hertz sound frequency on the germination of beans. Look at that graph. That were students that did this. From, you see on the, in centimeters, uh, after 35 days, you see the red uh, line is uh, the control group of the beans. It's, uh, it's below 15 centimeters high. And the one with 15 minutes a day of uh, 432 hertz, just uh, like, uh, like the tune you hear in the phone, in the old phones, when you take the phone or even the phone today, you hear, well, that's uh, that's 440 hertz. But if it's the same, it's very close at 432. Well, you give this frequency to plants, and they feel directly a lot better. Uh, so even humans, uh, uh, but don't give it to babies; otherwise, they grow too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Uh... <laughs> uh... So, but they will be more healthy for sure. And uh, so here you see after 35 days, the group width 432 hertz, it's more than 25 centimeters. 
uh, compared to uh, less than 15 centimeters. So it's a huge difference. And that's only after 35 days. So imagine a tree growing uh, like in a wood forest or in an orchard after 20 years. It's a big difference. It's a really big difference. Or all your plants in your garden. It's like you will uh, produce 30% more. Another experiment, this was with uh, music, uh, uh, another group of students that uh, put some uh, music and they had also huge effects like this. Uh, they, 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 uh, they put uh, uh, music of 440 Hertz and 432 Hertz and uh, a random uh, sound also, and uh, a control without sound. sound. Uh, and they did, uh, and here you see the results. Uh, this was with 440, 432 words, and um, a, a control group without sound. Here you see after 104 hours, so it's like uh, four days, after four days on the germination of beans. Uh, with that uh, music on 432 hertz or 40, 40 hertz or without. You see huge difference. Already with 440 hertz, there's a lot better growth than just uh, silence. Huh? Just no music at all is, is worse than music. It's like when you are thirsty, it's better to drink even um, uh, not clean water than not to drink at all, you see? <laughs> but it's better to drink clean water. Uh, it's even better. But uh, if, if the water is not toxic, uh, but it, it's, it's better to have a, a, a water than nothing at all. Well, with sound, it's quite similar also. It's better to have some sound uh, at 442 hertz, I'd better with a certain harmony, uh, because it can also have uh, toxic effects if it's uh, like uh, heavy metal or whatever, it can be very bad. Uh. Um, uh, but with 432 hertz, you see huge difference uh, in growth. Uh, it's like more than double or around the double with 432 hertz and around 25% more uh, with 440 hertz in the length of the stem, a stem length. So when people are saying that 432 hertz, it's not proven, well, here you see some proof and that it's really uh, a fact, it's really a reality that it's a lot better for health and uh, compared with 440 hertz. I'm convinced I'm not the only one uh, when I speak with artists, uh, musicians about this, uh, they observe that when they play the, the same music at 432 hertz, they have, it develops really a lot more their intuition and creativity. So when you go in nature, it will stimulate also a lot more with the natural sounds your creativity, intuition, harmony, than uh, if you just listen to music at the radio at 442 hertz, at 440 hertz. Uh, uh, um, it's very important because it's like it puts us on the right tune with nature. Uh, it creates more harmony, more growth, health, and well being. Uh, um, I make uh, wind chimes also at 432 hertz. Well, when you have a classic wind chime that is not tuned at all, that you buy from China or Asia, uh, very cheap in the shops uh, everywhere, uh, well, very rapidly it makes you nervous because it's like in the beginning you like it because it's just a little bit sound, but then after uh, very quickly, uh, you don't like it anymore and you it makes you stress and nervous and then they the most people put them again away well when your wind chime is tuned to 432 hertz i i, I i'm uh, i observe it over and over again uh, with my customers and people around me they like it and they never put their wind chime away <laughs> It's, it's even the opposite. People are visiting their garden and then they say, wow, that's really wonderful. 
that sound and it's like you feel it brings you in balance and it brings also in balance the energy around and and um, i had a, a, a testimonial like this where a chicken went always under the wind chime to stay there just to listen to, to the wind chime uh, uh, every day. Uh, the, I had two times that testimonial from people. It's, it's really nature also like it. And that picture, like you see on, on this slide, is uh, where you see a, a colored uh, environment. Well, that color is like a filter from a... Uh, application on the, um, the invention of Harry Oldfield to measure uh, subtle energy that is called the net, the new energy vision. And when I played the sound of that wind chime, I saw in the light uh, through the, that application that there was an energy field growing around. So it shows that sound, it's not only a mechanical vibration, it's also an electromagnetic light vibration, but it's a it's a very subtle light uh, uh, that you don't see with your naked eye, but with uh, applications and high sensitive uh, cameras you can see it. Uh, and now uh, the the electronic cameras of today are even more sensitive than our eye. Uh, so uh, now it's possible to see those subtle energies, and it makes it gives some proof to to the the assumption or to the phrase that we or the sentence we could say that uh, this brings light or when something is positive that you say ah oh, this is like it brings light it's a light being or it's light it's really it's because you really radiate light you really when you are in good energies you really radiate light uh, or it's, we we. We call it also biophotons. Huh? Well, uh, when you have more energy, you radiate more biophotons too. That's the work of uh, Fri Albert Fritz Pop, for example, that showed this uh, scientifically. So sound have really direct influence on uh, biophotons too, and on the light around and the harmony of the light. With sound, you can also hear with the sonotest or the cosmic tune that I call it. It's a little uh, a sound instrument that make it possible to measure also energies, subtle energies. When you scan, for example, before your body um, with that sound, where 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 it will increase the sound, it's where you have more energy. And while it where it will absorb the sound, you will hear it that the sound is absorbed, that the sound will decrease. It's where you have a problem. An example: if you have a teeth with a problem and you scan with the tuning fork, you will hear where is the problem because it will absorb the energy. Well, if you do it for like you take two apples one apple with the warm inside and one apple without well the one with the warm with ha will have less energy maybe more proteins but less energy <laughs> but <laughs> well what you will scan with the uh, with the sound tune uh, with the cosmic tune you will hear that the sound will decrease will be absorbed by the apple uh, so it shows that you have an interaction of of the sounds and the energy around uh, that that you that sounds is also like a, a nutrient uh, to the environment to the plants if we need certain sounds it's like it will we will absorb it well the plants do they will like absorb certain frequencies when they need it it's like with the lakovsky coil when a plant is diseased it's lacking of certain frequencies and the Lakovsky coil will help to bring the lacking frequencies that the plants need. And with the electroculture antennas, it's also the idea that I developed with the different antennas is that the idea is to bring, a, a, to have a holistic approach to bring a lot of beneficial, beneficial frequencies and energies and then the plants will, will take what they need or the soil uh, microorganisms will take what they need or the environment will take what it needs. 
Yeah. Uh, ah, in relation to the electromagnetic half waves or low frequency waves of the Earth that we call also the Schumann waves. Well, Mozart, for example, he made also a music not at 432 hertz. Uh, he made also for 432 hertz, but uh, that was the most uh, music in that time. But he made also tuned at 422 hertz. And then I was thinking why he did that. And, and this was uh, music requiem for, for planet Earth or something, for, for the Earth. And then I was thinking, uh, he is a clever guy. So if he did that, he had an intention behind it. So he has a reason. So I want to find out what is the reason. <laughs> and, and so I, I did some uh, calculations of frequencies. And I discovered that uh, when the A is at 422 hertz, then a, a lot of different other frequencies of different sound notes are directly in harmony. And, uh, harmonics of uh, the Schumann frequencies. So that's very interesting because he did it by purpose for planet Earth. And uh, the Schumann frequency is really specific to planet Earth too. So it's like it puts you in tune with the Earth natural frequencies, uh, really specifically compared with the other planets. Huh? So that's very interesting too. But uh, so Mozart didn't do didn't do this uh, by hazard. Huh? How the how did he know this? I don't know. Maybe he he was inspired or he had access to certain knowledge. I don't know. Um, another example in old uh, traditions, they say that uh, in old. Indian um, uh, knowledge, they say that the earth is created or supported by a turtle. Very interesting. We, we spoke already about that sound creates light also. Uh, uh, in, an, in an experiment I showed you uh, with the work of Harry Oldfield and the wind shine. Uh, so, well, when you look at the story of creation in the Bible, for example, they speak, first you have the word, so you have the sound, and then it says, let, let there be light. So you have the sound before the light. Very interesting. Uh, I, uh, I feel it really uh, so. Well, sound is really one of the energies. It's, it's really a creative force. When you put your thoughts in sound, when you pray and you pray loudly, you pray by speaking uh, out, it's a lot more powerful than just praying without speaking because you, you, you create sound when you, when you speak. And so the words we, we, we tell, uh, what we tell is very um, creative and, and have an a very important effect on the reality around us. Huh? Even uh, through prayers, but even when we speak with our friends or meet now, uh, I speak, I have to be careful what I tell because maybe thousands of people will listen to that presentation. And sometimes I, 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 I can... Maybe a lot of people will then follow those errors. I don't want that. And so I, I try to, to, to speak clearly and, and, to, and try to, to share with you uh, the idea in the best way I can. So, well, when you look at your own life, there are sometimes you meet a friend or your grandfather or grandmother or your own uh, parents. And maybe one day they told you one sentence that influenced your whole life. <laughs> well, and maybe 
that sentence, the one that told it, they they were not aware that it will it would influence the, your whole life. They they just maybe told it like between uh, b b b b between uh, how do you say that? Uh, in 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 Dutch you have an expression like this between the the potatoes and the soup, <laughs> uh, or uh, like uh, at lunchtime or whatever. So. So it's very important to be conscious of this, that our that we need to be careful what we say, uh, because it's creative and it will influence uh, the whole environment. Well, here to come back to that turtle and cymatics. So cymatics is a research like uh, we find from Alexander Lauterwasser, but also other research like uh, John Stuart Reid and a lot of others. It's when you put frequencies on sand, for example, you put a plate and sand uh, particles. Well, at certain frequencies, you will see that geometric forms will appear. And um, and uh, also on a water drop, if you put frequencies on a water drop, you will have even uh, 3D geometric forms appearing that are closely uh, resembling to uh, first the cells on Earth or little um, little microorganisms or, or or even little animals uh, like worms or things. It's like the water drop will transform itself in a vibrating worm, for example. It's like sound or the combination of frequencies of sound. It's like the architecture. Uh, it's like the the template of, of uh, like here of planet Earth. Like on planet Earth, you have in dowsing and, and ge geobiology or geomantica, you learn that you have a lot of a lot of grids and energy lines and uh, and so on. Well, maybe it there is like a, a vibration behind it that makes that geometry uh, template or taking form. Huh? So that's uh, also when you speak. Maybe you think the sound is just coming out of your mouth, but that's not a reality. In reality, the sound is created at your larynx and it develops itself in a, in a three-dimension way, even in, in your back and on the side. The sound is generated like a standing wave. And, uh, and it's not only in front of your mouth. Even if you put your hand, you hear you. So it's it's not it's it's uh, around uh, but uh, it will be with more intensity in front of you but it's uh, really around you you create like an energy field um so that's very interesting and what is interesting with cymatics is that when you just put a random sign a sound you almost know how you you don't have geometric forms but that's really at certain frequency that you have geometric patterns happening. Huh? Um, so it's like with the music too, that uh, the, the sound notes or the, the frequencies of the molecules are not by hazard. They are, they are like in harmony with each other. And even more than that, it's also in movement. Uh, uh, it creates, like here on a plate of a water with a certain frequency, for example, you see like a spiral. Well, the spiral in reality is moving, it's rotating, so with a certain frequency. And when you compare with forms you find in nature, it's like the forms in nature, like the snail shell, for example, it's like you have that dynamic form that is just stopped in time and then you have a photograph of the movement you see like when you see nature around the the reality around us is like a photograph of movement when you see a plant it's just a form in evolution that is influenced by subtle energies uh, that influences it 
in a certain way, but it's always in movement. And it's like what you see, it's like the, the result of, of, of all those subtle energies uh, on the moment you look at it. <laughs> uh, so at any moment, you can choose to change those energies and then the plant growth will change in another way or, or so at any moment. Uh, so it's it's about, and it's not by changing things on a photograph that you will change the the subtle energies behind it. So an example in traditional uh, in in conventional farming, wh when they use uh, chemicals, for example, or if you use um, uh, fertilizers in the classic way. It's like you change the photograph. You don't change the subtle energies that causes the situation. You just uh, try to change the, the picture. It's like you have, oh, the leaves are not green enough. I put the product that uh, makes it green. And then they paint their grass around their house that is yellow because there is no water. They paint it green. And then they say, oh, now my grass is green. <laughs> Uh, uh, so they, they don't change the, the energy, you see. If you have uh, like, uh, yeah, the relation with water. Well, the water, if, if it's not good water, it will, do, it will not hydrate very good the plants. And then they will not really become very greenish or very healthy. But when you have water with really the energy inside it, like from a rain, like from thunderstorm, then even with very little bit of water, all plants become a lot greener because you have that energetic aspect in, in it. So it's not just about water. So it's about those subtle energies. It's not easy to explain, but that's what I want to explain with uh, electroculture too. It's not just about those antennas and those uh, 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 technical aspects uh, and machines and whatever. No, it's about the subtle energy we try to influence and uh, catch and stimulate. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more than just about antennas. Huh? Um, Ah, about water, yes. <laughs> so water energizing with vortex and flow forms. Well, in the flow form, like uh, in, in the vortex, you have that aspect of the spiraling antenna of the Igina spiral, for example. You can imagine that when you create a vortex, you create Igina spirals in the fluid. So that, that acts as an antenna that catches those subtle energies also. But at the same time, when you make a vortex and you put, for example, a voltmeter, a voltmeter between the center and the, and the edge and the border or in the bucket, when you make a vortex in a bucket, well, you will measure voltage. You create really an electrical field that you can measure. And when we speak about an electrical field, you have also a magnetic field. So it's like you make a magnetic water treatment, but without magnets in a natural way, in a natural way. And above it, if you put some uh, paramagnetic basalt rocks or silicium rocks or uh, certain crystals also at the same time, then when the water will, will scratch uh, uh, on the on the walls of the rock, it will create like also kind of static electricity and energy fields that will also stimulate uh, the water. So you have a lot of different aspects with just a vortex. Just a vortex is not just a movement of water. No, it's a lot more than that. Uh, uh, when you have a living river, with vortexes, uh, it's a world different than the where, where the water uh, goes straight huh? in a living river. You have a lot of vortexes and it has uh, huge effects. Um, uh, maybe I will look what it's after. Ah, yes. <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah. 
here this is to show that's an inventor uh, called Pierre Rubesa and he discovered it's a Canadian too that's all Canadians <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, good inspiration in Canada it seems <laughs> um, so and uh, he he came to Switzerland now he lives in Switzerland uh, or the last time I met him, he lived in Switzerland, but that's a few years ago now. And he discovered an electronic circuit where he can measure like an electromagnetic spectrum of all living organisms and also water, water. And he discovered that when something, when an organism is healthy, you have a lot of coherence inside the electromagnetic spectrum of the organism. And when an organism is diseased, you, you have chaos. And when you have too much chaos, then it go to death. He was able to measure people that were, that were diseased by cancer and things like that, and very, uh, very um, uh, bad diseases. Huh? Well, there were people that healed and there were people that died. Well, the people that died, when he measured it, it was like he, they were above a certain chaos level. And then it could not again become harmonious. It's like it was too far from harmony. And the people that uh, uh, became again healthy well they 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 had a little uh, they had more harmony already uh, less chaos so we 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 find back again that notion of chaos and harmony so that uh, health is also about harmony uh, it's about energy levels but also about harmony between all those energies all those frequencies uh, and uh, sound beauty, uh, music, um, the environment, if you make a, a harmonious environment, uh, well, all those aspects will help to bring harmony and health and also healthy growth in our garden. So when we put different antennas, I would say, make it also that it looks beautiful, nice, that it's not just uh, a chaotic, um, uh, that you don't make a waste bin of your garden, huh? that, that you make uh, something uh, beautiful that, that is in harmony. Huh? It's, it's not just about thing, putting more antennas, no? You put the antennas in a way that it looks harmonious. Huh? That's uh, important also. Um, and what he discovered with uh, water, for example, is that uh, so I did experiments with him in the past. It was more than 10 years ago already now. Um, when you have a glass of water on the table, he measure a kind of electromagnetic spectrum that corresponds with the energy of the environment. And when somebody comes in the room, then he could measure the electromagnetic spectrum of the 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 man or the woman that came in the room it's like the water put itself directly in resonance with the uh, with the environment and when the guy looked with his eyes to the water then his electromagnetic spectrum was really amplified in the water it's like our uh, eyes are like a laser lasers <laughs> uh, so you will see that also in your garden when you walk in your garden you tend to look at certain plants and not other plants well the plants you will look more you give more attention tension an electrical tension or uh, or it's an energy in a certain way so if you look with good intentions and good energies you will it's like you give energy huh? also there's a chinese proverb or chinese sentence that say also something like this uh, that it's important uh the, the the plants you look at or just walk in your garden and look at them 
is already take care of them. <laughs> it's already uh, caring of them. Uh, it's like you have children. It's not just, oh, I let them in a room, I give them three times a day food, and it's okay. <laughs> you, you need to take care of them. So you need to be with them, to, to, uh, to listen to them, to, to just be there and, and, and take care. So, well, with our gardens, plants, animals, uh, also uh, uh, our presence and our energy, that we radiate even with our just with our thoughts will uh, influence and our feelings will influence uh, their development and our development too so uh, you you see here in that example of those two spectrums you see on the bottom well on the right is diseased dates so it's uh, those uh, dates that you can eat huh? or uh, healthy dates on the left you see that the energy spectrum is completely different it's like you eat something else it's like really something else the the outside aspect is the same but the, the energy is completely different so when you eat plants from your garden you eat like energy from that environment uh, it's it's like it's not just uh, lettuce or tomato or no it's really uh, it's a lot of water so water is an antenna you eat also the energy of the environment uh, you 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 do, you don't eat just nutrients or something like that no it's a lot more uh, profound than this and. We could with that with Pierre Rubisa, we did even experiments on wheat grains that were organic and conventional and that came from all the regions of France. Ah, really uh, like uh, like more than 20, 30 samples of wheat grains. And we could, by studying that electromagnetic spectrum, we could distinguish which one was organically grown and which one was conventionally grown because the frequencies were different there were specific characteristics or specific frequencies uh, corresponding with it and we could even measure the region we could even know from which region it came because you can find back like the frequency spectrum of the environment of the soil or the environment of the region so if if you are like in canada the soil the energy is different than in france than in, and even uh, uh, from one state to the other and one region to the other it will be different or one garden to the other it will be different so it's like you you can find that back it's it's like imprinted in the energy spectrum of the food and it goes even more profound than this um i met one time a farmer um and he he or a guy that, that knew a farmer with who he worked and and he told me uh, the following um, story that farmer discovered that when he eat food from far away from his place he began to become sick diseased and when he eat food from his local place, he be he be he became again healthy. So that's also very interesting. It's like and that you will see also an example. I coming from Belgium originally. Well, when I go back to in Belgium to where I grow where, where I grew up and I eat uh, uh, fries or potatoes locally. Well, I feel, I feel really nourished a lot more than when I eat the same potatoes where I live now, because it's different. It's like, uh, and there is a, a, an idea behind this, is that you are the best uh, nourished by the food grown where you, you, you were born. Uh, for, from where you are it's like the energetic uh, spectrum corresponds with your energy and you feel this and um, well 
it can also change, that can also explain why you feel a lot better at certain places and not at others. And that can be for everybody different. Uh, so maybe you go to a certain country on travel and you, when you eat everything, you don't feel nourished or not good or it, it doesn't uh, sweet you. And when you go at other places, it's like you always have been there and you feel good and, and that there's, there's some um, magic happening. It's like the energies are like in tune with you or not. And that's also uh, an important aspect. So when you do your garden, you will have plants that will grow very well with your energy and others not. Even if you put a lot of different techniques in place, um, it's also about a resonance of good energies. Uh, 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 and this will be different for each other. And that's for e each has to discover that for himself. Huh? So in future, we could uh, even develop, uh, technically it's possible, uh, uh, but it needs some investment and research, but it's possible. It's to develop like a scanning tool to measure energy. Uh, that would be very interesting too. And then you can go to the shop and measure the best food for you. <laughs> Uh, that, that corresponds with your energy, that is in resonance with your energy, and that is really good food, and not just uh, nice looking. Huh? So oh, we are already at the end. So I hope it was again very interesting for you. And uh, oh, there's still a lot to, to tell, but uh, time goes uh, further. Uh, I will work also on new presentations for the future. Huh? Uh, but uh, so that was an introduction to, to the influence on sound on plant growth and a lot more because I, sp I spoke uh, about a lot of other things that, but it all started with the research on the influence of music on plants. And personally, I was not a musician. I don't play music. I didn't know anything about music, but as an engineer, I was very curious how music can influence plant growth <laughs> because i didn't understand anything about this <laughs> and that's why i was curious and i wanted to know and i began to do research so i i i, I did research about music as an engineer you see as uh, that want to understand how how it works <laughs> and and uh, and uh, uh, but it can help uh, musicians also to have a more profound look to what they are doing of the music also. And, uh, and, and it shows also that you don't have a separate world between engineers, technical people and artists uh, and gardeners. It, we are all connected and the knowledge of each other is... Uh, 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 makes understand better each other too and each um, each 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 practice so uh, it's it's very interesting it's all connected yeah so thank you very much uh, to everybody and uh, I listen to all your questions <laughs> thank you